Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about the top 100 cryptocurrencies and their advanced decline index. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. Let's go ahead and jump in. So, in the past, we have talked about how Bitcoin tends to outperform a lot of the cryptocurrency asset class, not only in the bear market year, but also in the pre-having year as well. And we can see periods where Bitcoin in pre-having years has done relatively okay, but we also know that during that time, the altcoin market, many of them went on to put in new lows. At least that's what we saw that last cycle. And we've already seen some altcoins put in new lows this cycle as well. Now, there's an interesting way to visualize this trend. So if you're unfamiliar with the advanced decline ratios, that's actually something that people use quite frequently to, to look at, say, the breadth in, in the stock market. And I thought, well, why don't we take a similar type of thing and apply it to the cryptocurrency asset class? So in this video, we're going to be looking at the advanced decline index for the top 100 cryptocurrencies. Okay? Now, I, I want to make sure we go through the description of this so that everyone fully understands what it is we're actually looking at. So an asset is said to have advanced over a certain period of time, whether you want to look at it on a daily time frame or a weekly time frame or a monthly time frame, if the closing price is higher than the opening price for that period. So if, say, the asset opens at a dollar and then closes at two dollars, then you would say that that asset has actually advanced. If it opens at a dollar and closes at 50 cents, then you say that asset has declined. OK, so that's the, the general idea behind advance and decline. Now, the advanced decline index is calculated as looking at the total number of daily advances. Again, we're only looking at the top 100 cryptocurrencies minus the daily declines plus the prior index value. OK, and the, the so the advanced decline index can basically just be seen as the running sum of the difference between daily advances and daily declines. So in general, if you see this trending up, right, I and mean, you can you can look at it over here, but if you see this trending up, it means there is more advancing cryptocurrencies than declining cryptocurrencies in terms of price. If you see it trending down, then there are more declining cryptocurrencies than advancing cryptocurrencies. So when you think about, you know, the fundamentals of of a of a bull market that actually have the breadth that you that you would like to see, what you would want to see is you'd want to see this metric trending up. Okay. Now, a great example of this is if you look back over here in January of 2020, what you'll see is that it actually bottomed out just a few months before the halving, the advanced decline index. Now, we did see cryptocurrency capitulate here in March of 2020, but in terms of the advanced decline index, this was ultimately just a higher low. And what ultimately happened is we then just put in a series of higher lows and higher highs from January of 2020 until November of 2021. Now, ever since November of 2021, at least up until December of 2022, we were putting in lower highs and lower lows. Now, technically speaking, we could argue that these are even still lower highs from these peaks back over here. What's interesting is you actually can see a similar type of trend last cycle as well, where we saw this decline from the peak for a while, find some type of low, and it found this low in December of 2018. This low over here was found in you know December of 2022, so just four years later. We then saw it trend higher and not put in a new low on the advanced decline index until September of that year. Now, the reason why September is interesting of the pre-having year of 2019 is that's actually when we saw a lot of altcoins finally bottom out on their Bitcoin pairs. That's when ETH bottomed out against Bitcoin last cycle. That's also when uh, Cardano bottomed out against Bitcoin last cycle. There's actually a lot of cryptocurrencies that bottomed out against Bitcoin in September of the pre-having year. Now, many of them continued to slowly go lower on their USD pairs until the early part of the halving year, 
but a lot of them actually had bottomed out against Bitcoin by about the third quarter of the pre-halving year. So you can see that a new downtrend in the advanced decline index started in the summer of 2019. So, you know, Bitcoin did fade here in the second half of the pre-halving year last cycle, but we also saw a lot of cryptocurrencies go down a lot more because of that d decline, I think, in, in the Bitcoin price. Remember, Bitcoin controls the rest of the market. Uh, whether you like it or not. I mean, it's one of those things where you, you don't you don't necessarily have to like it, but you should at least respect it. I mean, I think a lot of people would say, well, you know, if Bitcoin were to drop 10% tomorrow, most altcoins would drop with it, right? You, there might be a few that don't, but most altcoins would drop with it if Bitcoin would were to start a, a longer downtrend like it did coming out of the summer of 2019. And you can see here, I mean, this time it, it actually sort of hit, at least hit this high, uh, back in February, and then ever since then, it's just been a series of, of lower highs. If it follows what happened last cycle, then it would mean breaking this prior low sometime in, in the third quarter of this year, sometime in September. That would still be another two months from now. You can also look at this for just, say, the top 25 cryptocurrencies as well. Uh, you can also look at it for the top 10. When you look at it for only a smaller number of cryptocurrencies, I don't really think it gives you as good of a signal just because there's not nearly as many to compare to. But I mean, if you were to just look at, say, the top 10, this is what it looks like just so you can see it. Um, last cycle from January 2018, you can see we're essentially just putting in lower highs. Uh, a bit of a pump here in, in the summer of 2019, but it, it faded the second half of the year and ultimately bottomed out uh, in the early phase of the halving year or the late phase of the pre-halving year. And then over here, again, it's just been a series of lower highs as well at least so far. I mean, yes, technically since December, we've also seen higher lows, but you could also argue something similar happened over here in the last cycle, right? We had a, a brief period, about half a year, where the advanced decline index for the top 10 was, was putting in higher lows and higher highs, but it ultimately did not take out, you know, any of these prior highs. And, and I guess that's ultimately the question is, is, you know, is this going to just continue to trend down for a while like it did last cycle? So hopefully, hopefully this is interesting. I mean, you could also apply a moving average to some of this stuff just to get an idea uh, if you wanted to smooth it out. But I think this is an interesting way to view the market because I think a lot of us, you know, we understand that that there are a lot of cryptocurrencies that have gone to put in new lows, but we always just sort of compare them to, you know, what have they done recently, right? That's why a lot of times people get excited when an altcoin gets a bounce off of its recent low is because they only really care about what it's done since last week. They don't necessarily care about what it what it's done over the last six months. They just want to know what it did last week. So these metrics, uh, I think, have a way of, of, of keeping us a bit more honest in terms of what has been the overall trend for the asset class. And I mean, you know, so far it, it has played out in a similar manner um, to what we saw last cycle. And in fact, you know, this low here that occurred in in December 2018 is also kind of right where we were in you know in November of 2022. We actually did go just a bit lower in December as some of the altcoins continue to go down. Uh, but there are there are a lot of similarities for sure um, between looking at last cycle and this cycle and the advanced decline index. Again, this is something that you'll find used in in equity markets, right? Look, people will look at this to get a, an idea: is the broader index going up or is it just a few different stocks? You probably heard a lot of people talk about that in the most recent rally by the by the S and P. It has been lifted higher by a few individual stocks. The the, the broader S and P hasn't done nearly as well as just say like the top you know some of the top ones. Okay, like we know Nvidia has done really well. We know Meta has done really well. Google and a few others, um, and, and Microsoft, right? And a lot of them are responsible for a majority of the gains that the S and P has seen. Now, oftentimes. You know, you will see some of the smaller caps catch up, at least in equities. But in cryptocurrency, I mean, you know, even in 2019, I remember we watched the, um, you know, watching the stock market go up and put in new highs and, and crypto, crypto rolled over, you know, halfway through the year, even though the S&P kept going up. So just an interesting way to visualize the market. This is the advanced decline index for the top 100 cryptocurrencies. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and again, check out the sale on Into the Cryptoverse Premium at intothecryptoverse.com. You can get access to this chart as well as many others. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.